You want the functionality of Wi-Fi Manager, secure over-the-air update, and an overview over all your ESP devices wherever they are? Two years ago, we announced IoTAppStory.com as a Christmas gift. It was the first app store for IoT devices and it worked for the ESP8266. Today, we can announce that it also works with the ESP32. And it got much cooler. Great YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent, with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. The idea behind IoTAppStory.com is to make it simple and secure to distribute and manage software for IoT devices over the air. Most of us implemented some connected devices in our homes. At places, we cannot easily upload new software or change parameters, like passwords or access keys. And if you have more and more of those devices, we even might lose control of which software runs on which board. The new IoTAppStory.com, developed by Ono and me over the last two years, consists of a library and a web service. Stores and distributes software, SPIFs files and parameters for ESP8266 and ESP32 boards. The distribution is over the air. It has all the functions of Wi-Fi Manager, like entering Wi-Fi passwords or settings with your smartphone. It uses HTTPS for transport and makes sure only you can upload software to your devices. You can monitor your devices over the network. It works globally. You can also manage your devices in a remote location. The footprint on your ESP is optimized because most of the functionality runs in your browser. Today, I walk you through the installation and the startup of an ESP32 using IoTAppStory.com. The library should be available in the library manager of the Arduino IDE. Please install the latest version 2.0. If not, get it from GitHub with the link in the description. If you use an older version, you have to manually remove it from your libraries folder. Also, see the wiki for the date of the shutdown of version 1 support. Then you have to have an account on iotappstory.com. It is hosted by Onno in the Netherlands. And it is free for makers. If you log in and go to your control panel, it is empty because so far nothing happened. But you see four menus. Devices, My Apps, Projects and Logs. And the wiki to help you if you search for additional information. IoTAppStory.com has a flexible but straightforward structure. A project connects one or more devices to an app. Let's assume we want to build a blinking ESP32. For that, we have to create a project called Blinking ESP32s. We also enter a picture to distinguish it from other projects. And we select the app which is capable of doing the blinking. In this case, the Blink ESP32 app, which is already here. Because we have no device registered yet, we save this project for the future use. And we set it to online or productive. To make sure the software on your device can only be changed by you, we have to create a tight connection between the device and the backend. This is done by registering our ESP32 to iotappstory.com. The sketch iotappstoryloader.ino does this registration. You find the sketch in the examples of the library. No changes like Wi-Fi credentials are needed. Just upload it to your ESP and it starts to do its thing. After a few seconds, it creates an access point for your mobile phone. Please do not use the browser on your Windows PC for that step. Microsoft loads a too big burden on our poor ESP32s. On your smartphone, you should now find a Wi-Fi network called initloader-xxx. Please connect to it and select 192.168.4.1 in your browser. Now you should see a list of networks as the ESP32 sees it. If not, hit refresh on the browser. You select the network you want the ESP to connect to and enter its password. 
Now the ESP automatically connects to your network and your browser is redirected to the IP address of your ESP. A configuration screen appears and you can name your device. I use the type of the board plus the color of the mark on my board. Please also select the board type and hit next. Now we can select the project we created before and IoT App Story knows everything it needs. Now everything is set and done and we can exit the configuration mode. The ESP32 reboots and calls home. The infrastructure knows that a new version of the sketch has to be loaded to this particular ESP and initiates an over-the-air update. And a few seconds later, the ESP starts to blink on pin 2. From now on, we could finish our project and place the ESP32 in a case. We can change the sketch without ever opening the box again. My YouTube subscriber counter, for example, runs on iotappstory.com. Like that, I can upgrade the code without opening the box. If we go now to the logs page, we see what happened over the last minutes. We recognize that the init loader sketch called home got its Blink ESP32 app, went into config mode and back to normal operation. If something goes wrong, you always can see what happened. I told you that you never have to open your project case again. So the Blink ESP32 sketch has to have the functionality to update the app over the air. This is precisely the task of the library because our ESPs do not have this functionality built in. Fortunately, with the help of the library, it is easy. Let's now look at the Blink sketch and compare it with a simple Blink sketch we all know. The new Blink sketch has much more code and it looks complicated. Right, but most of this code is always the same and is provided by an example called virginsoil-basic.ino. Your part of the loop starts here, but it looks completely different than the typical Blink sketch. Yes, that's true. The original Blink sketch was programmed for beginners and uses delay functions. With iotappstory.com, you have to avoid delay statements and write your code in a non-blocking way. But this is anyway good programming practice. The sketch loops all the time. When the Blink time is passed, it enters the if statement, reads the current state of the LED and flips it to the contrary. The dpinconf function is an additional gift from Ono to enable you to use either the DX or the GPIO notation for your ESP8266 pins. The setup part of your sketch enters here. No rocket science. With this implant, your Blink sketch has all the functionality of Wi-Fi Manager Plus over the air update using HTTPS. You do the same thing if you want to port one of your sketches to iotappstory.com. You start with Virgin Soil Basic or Virgin Soil Full and make sure your code is non-blocking using the same method shown in the example before. Then you copy paste the loop part here and the setup part there. Maybe you have to take out some statements in your setup like serial.begin. If you want to change the pins or enter an access key from your smartphone, you have to add these lines. Otherwise, you use the usual define for your pins. Done. And because you do not need to upload your sketch through your serial cable, you use export compiled binary to create a bin file in the sketch directory. Now you go to the apps page in iotappstory.com and create your new app. You can enter additional information like a description or a picture. Then you upload the bin file you created before and hit save. Your app is created and can be used in your projects. If attached to a project, your device will get your binary when it calls home the next time. An additional word to the call home function. You either can automatically call home after a certain time 
or you can initiate the call home by pressing the button defined in your sketch for about 3 seconds. Your serial monitor shows when you can release the button. The default is the flash button on GPIO0. By the way, if you press the button for about 8 seconds, you enter into the configuration mode. The last question. How can we change the LED pin from our smartphone? To do that, we have to go to configuration mode and head over to the settings menu. Here we see a picture of our board with all pins and we can select the one we want. Cool. No more need to search for the pinout of your device. If you're interested, you can also publish your apps on the platform. Then other makers can use it. For example, if you manufacture hardware, you could flash the IAS loader on your devices and your customer could then enter his Wi-Fi credentials and automatically download and install the newest version of your published app. Or you are a small company and your devices from time to time need new software. Then you can purchase a higher service level and automatically update your devices everywhere in the world from your offices. And if you encounter problems during installation or want to share some of your learnings, we created a Discord server for that reason. You find the link in the description. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. If true, please consider supporting the channel to secure its future existence. You find the links in the description. Thank you. Bye.